For more on the death of the president of Iran, Global Affairs Analyst Colin Zumweke joins me live on World Now. Thank you so much for joining us at this time. Our condolences are actually pouring in following the death of President Raisi. What's your reaction to his death alongside others in that helicopter crash? Well, thank you for having me. I mean, it's a sad day. Um, I mean, um, away from geopolitics and uh, and all of that, um, a human life uh, and an important one, the head of, um, you know, the political head of uh, of a country, a major country of the world, uh, has just uh, perished. And so um, it is sad, and uh, it calls for, um, for mourning for all who, um, you know, respect uh, humanity. And so um, that um, actually is to be seen in uh, the um, spate of um, uh, condolences that have been uh, uh, coming in uh, from different parts of the world. I mean, the major countries of the world, uh, you know, are yet to, um, you know, send in their condolences. United States, um, you know, as far as I'm aware, the European Union, perhaps one or two, um, you know, countries of... Um, uh, of the EU may have um, sent condolences, but that also uh, reminds of, uh, us of uh, the sharp divide in, uh, you know, in global politics. Um, and uh, one can only hope that, um, you know, gradually uh, humanity would begin to take precedence over uh, politics and, uh, and all of that. So uh, th this will be my initial thoughts uh, regarding the death of uh, the president of Iran. All right. But what's the potential impact of this incident on Iran as a country and on the Middle East? Well, um, with the exit of a new, um, oh, sorry, of an old uh, president, uh, actually comes a renewal of hope that uh, the new person will uh, bring in a uh, change, especially in an environment like Iran, where, um, you know, the citizens have been uh, calling for change. Uh, and incrementally, since 2022, when um, Raisi actually took over the reign of uh, the country, an arch conservative, uh, you know, um, leader uh, who has uh, actually... Um, you know, money to even alienate uh, Iran more uh, from uh, from the rest of from the rest of the Western uh, world. One would expect that uh, in situations when things like that happen, where um, you know uh, you decide to concentrate on uh, the perceived enemies, which are the West, that people you know leaders then concentrate on domestic politics. You know, but um, he has not even succeeded that much in the domestic politics because uh, we have seen incrementally that the economy is more in shambles. We have also seen that, uh, you know, the, the spate of um, uh, hardlining uh, as regards uh, uh, the rights of women and so on and so forth are becoming even more But Iranians have even not rested. They have always continued to take to the street. So the expectation, of course, is that a new leader uh, is going to... Um, you know, do things differently. Um, but ask me if they are now ready to embrace the rest of um, of the world. I mean, in terms of uh, a closer relationship with uh, with the West, I, I doubt it. I doubt it because uh, for many, the um, you know spiritual leader of the of the country remains uh, a very very relevant force in Iranian politics, and um, you know that has a lot to say in regards to, um, you know, who leads next. And he's appointed, um, you know, an acting president, uh, an interim president pending uh, an election. And so uh, there's a whole lot of uh, wait and see, really. Indeed. And when you mentioned change, and I was going to ask what kind of change you're talking about, because remember, the foreign minister was also part of that crash. And now uh, a replacement in acting capacity has been announced. And that individual is actually the country's nuclear negotiator, so I'm, uh, you know, wondering what you think this could uh, portend for the countries, I mean, for conflict in the Middle East on one hand, and then for the country's nuclear policies. The country's nuclear policies may not, uh, in fact, it's almost certain that uh, it might even be more hardline 
uh, than it had been uh, before now in the hands of the, the acting president. Now, I'm not certain what the um, Constitution says. If the acting president, you know, is uh, allowed to then run uh, for the uh, substantive position, you know, when an election is uh, called, uh, which of which uh, now that is acting president, he gives me an he gives him an edge over others. So we might be looking at him as the next uh, president. So as far as um, you know, uh, alienating Iran uh, from the rest of the Western world is concerned. Um, I, if anything, I think it's going to be worse under the uh, acting uh, president. Now, the change that uh, one may expect, of course, is a change in domestic policies such that more attention will be paid to uh, economic uh, policies that will improve the lot of the people. But um, it does look like uh, their priorities are uh, geared more towards uh, uranium enrichment. Uh, it is sapping a whole lot of them, you know, their funds. And also, uh, the issues of sanction is uh, biting very, very, very hard. Uh, so there's got to be a change in domestic policies, uh, more specifically on economic uh, policies, and a bit of adaptations, um, you know, in the way politics is done there, that it is more inclusive and that they are more, more open to, uh, you know, human rights issues and women affairs. Those are the sort of changes one could expect, really. Wake of, you know, the crash. Russia has said it's ready to provide assistance to Iran's investigation into that crash, I mean, into the cause of the crash. What's your reaction to that? The strengthening of ties between these allies? Well, essentially, that's what it means. And um, if you look at uh, some of the reactions of Iran uh, towards other countries of uh, the world, including Russia, you would see that um, uh, the proxy war with the West uh, simply continues uh, with Iran. So what that means essentially is that um, even when something runs contra, so Iran's, um, you know, uh, national uh, politics, but also their uh, ideology, as long as it has the potential to uh, actually slight the West, they are all out for it. Take, um, you know, the uh, Russian invasion of Ukraine uh, as an example. They are supporting um, uh, Russia in that war because they feel it is part of getting, uh, you know, getting back to, um, you know, to the United States and the rest of, uh, of the world. And then also look at their activities uh, in the Middle East, uh, where they are the strongest uh, supporter of uh, Hamas, but also Hezbollah. Um, of course, there is, uh, you know, some ideological, uh, you know, consideration there. But uh, in addition to that, their spite for the world, particularly the United States, which is the strongest ally of Israel, uh, is uh, played out there. So you see, um, no, uh, it, there is going to be more uh, alienation. Mm -hmm. All right, then, Global Affairs Analyst Colin Zawinki, thank you so much for talking to us on World Now. Always my pleasure.